feedlot versus pasture. Same question I get every single week in cattle fattening. Which one actually produces better results? And the answer is way more complicated than you think because I just compared the feeding program side by side, tracked average daily gains, analyzed the costs, and what I found is gonna make some people very uncomfortable. Feedlot beef cattle are eating a ration that costs 68 cents per head per day. Pasture cattle, 19 cents. But here's the plot twist. The weight gains aren't what you'd expect at all. One method is three times faster, but the other is four times more profitable per pound. And there's actually a hybrid approach that almost nobody talks about that combines both and... Okay, let me just show you the data. Let's start with what feedlot cattle are actually consuming on a daily basis. The typical feedlot ration is engineered for one purpose, maximum weight gain in minimum time. We're talking about a high energy diet composed primarily of corn, making up about 70 to 80% of the total ration. Then you've got protein supplements, usually soybean meal or distiller's grains, accounting for 10 to 15%. Add in roughage like hay or silage at 5 to 10% to keep the rumen functioning. And finally, a vitamin and mineral premix. This isn't natural grazing. This is precision feeding designed to push cattle to gain 3 to 4 pounds per day consistently. Now here's what most ranchers don't realize, and this is critical. That feedlot ration is incredibly dense in calories. We're looking at rations that deliver 1.2 to 1.3 megacalories per pound of feed. The entire digestive system of that animal is being forced into overdrive. But the trade-off? You're finishing a steer in 4 to 6 months instead of 18 to 24 months on pasture. Time is money in the cattle business, and feedlots understand this better than anyone. But wait! because the pasture story is completely different, and this is where it gets interesting. Pasture-raised cattle are consuming primarily forages, grasses like fescue, ryegrass, clover, alfalfa when available. The protein content varies wildly depending on the season and pasture management. Spring grasses might hit 20 to 25% crude protein. Summer grasses drop down to 8 to 12%. This fluctuation is something feedlot cattle never experience because their diet is consistent every single day. And here's the thing nobody tells you about pasture feeding. The quality of that forage determines everything. I've seen ranchers wonder why their cattle aren't gaining weight on pasture. And when we test the forage, it's mature, lignified grass with almost no nutritional value. You can't just throw cattle on any field and expect results. Pasture management is a skill, and most people are doing it wrong. So let me break down the actual nutritional differences, because this is where the science gets fascinating. Feedlot rations typically contain 14 to 16% crude protein, 70 to 80% total digestible nutrients, and the energy density is off the charts. Pasture forages, 8 to 20% crude protein, depending on the season, 50 to 70% total digestible nutrients, and significantly lower energy density. This is why feedlot cattle gain weight faster. It's pure mathematics of energy input. But here's the cliffhanger you need to understand. Faster weight gain doesn't always mean better profit margins. Stay with me here because this changes everything. A feedlot steer gaining 3.5 pounds per day sounds incredible, right? But at 68 cents per head per day in feed costs alone, you're spending roughly 19 cents per pound of gain, not including labor, facilities, medication, and equipment. Past your cattle gaining one pound per day at 19 cents total daily cost? That's 19 cents per pound of gain with virtually no other inputs. See where this is going? Now, the hybrid approach I mentioned at the beginning, this is the secret that's hiding in plain sight. It's called backgrounding, and it's the strategy that smart ranchers use to maximize both efficiency and profit. You raise cattle on pasture for the first 12 to 16 months, letting them develop frame and muscle on cheap forage. Then you finish them in a feedlot for the final 90 to 120 days on high energy rations to add the marbling and finish weight that buyers want. You're capturing the low cost gains from pasture and the rapid finish from the feedlot. But here's what most producers mess up with backgrounding. 
they don't transition properly. You can't take a steer off grass and immediately hit them with a full feedlot ration. The rumen needs time to adapt. We're talking about a 10 to 14 day transition period, gradually increasing grain and decreasing roughage. Skip this step, you're looking at acidosis, bloat, even death. I've seen it happen and it's completely preventable. Let's talk about the mistakes that are costing ranchers thousands of dollars. Mistake number one, overgrazing pastures. When you let cattle graze grass below three to four inches, you're damaging the root system and reducing future forage production. Rotational grazing isn't optional, it's essential for maintaining aster quality. Mistake number two, thinking all corn is created equal. In feedlots, the processing method matters tremendously. Steamflate corn has 15 to 20% better feed conversion than dry rolled corn. That difference adds up to real money over hundreds of head. Mistake number three, and this one drives me crazy, ignoring mineral supplementation on pasture. Grass-fed cattle need free choice minerals year round. Phosphorus, calcium, selenium, copper. These aren't luxuries, they're requirements for optimal growth and reproductive performance. I see ranchers cutting corners on a $30 mineral tub and then wondering why their conception rates are terrible. Now, what about the quality of the final product? Because this is where the feedlot versus pasture debate gets emotional. Feedlot beef has more intramuscular fat, that marbling that creates tenderness and flavor in grain-fed beef. The fatty acid profile is higher in omega-6 fatty acids. Pasture-raised beef is leaner, has a different flavor profile that some describe as more intense or grassy, and contains higher levels of omega-3 fatty acids and conjugated linoleic acid. Neither is better or worse, they're different products for different markets. Here's the strategic question you need to ask yourself, what market are you selling into? If you're selling to commodity buyers who grade on marbling, feedlot finishing is almost mandatory to hit choice or prime grades. If you're direct marketing to consumers who value grass-fed attributes and are willing to pay premium prices, pasture finishing makes total sense. Know your market before you choose your feeding strategy. And here's something critical that affects your bottom line. The break-even price shifts dramatically between these systems. Pasture operations typically have lower total costs but longer production cycles, tying up capital for extended periods. Feedlots have higher daily costs but faster turnover, allowing you to move more cattle through your operation annually. You need to calculate cost of gain, not just daily gain, to understand true profitability. One more thing before we wrap this up, and this might be the most important point of all, environmental impact and land requirements. One feedlot acre can support dozens of cattle simultaneously because you're importing feed from elsewhere. One pasture acre might support one cow-calf pair or less, depending on rainfall and soil quality. If you have limited land, the math might force you toward feedlot-style finishing whether you prefer it or not. So what's the verdict? If you want maximum weight gain and fastest time to market, feedlot rations win every time. If you want lowest cost per pound of gain and you have quality pasture, grass feeding is hard to beat. And if you want the best of both worlds, Backgrounding on pasture with feedlot finishing combines efficiency with economy. Here's what I want you to do right now. Take a hard look at your current feeding program. Are you making decisions based on data or assumptions? Are you actually tracking cost of gain or just guessing? Because the difference between profit and loss in cattle feeding often comes down to these details that most people ignore. If this information helped you see your cattle operation differently, do me a favor, subscribe to Biggest Bulls and Cow right now because we're building a community of ranchers who care about doing this right, who want to learn, improve, and actually make money in this business. Drop a comment below and tell me, are you feeding in a feedlot, on pasture, or using a hybrid approach? What's working for you and what challenges are you facing? Your experience helps other ranchers learn, and that's what this community is all about. And if you know another cattle producer who needs to hear this information, share this video with them. We rise together when we share knowledge. I'll see you in the next one, and until then, 
keep learning, keep improving, and keep raising great cattle.